Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the White House. It is a pleasure to be here today as we honor some of our country's most talented, most visionary, most public-minded designers, folks whose work has literally changed the way we look at the world and how we live our daily lives. Our honorees today come from a wide variety of disciplines and fields, from architecture and landscape to product design, interior design, and much more. But all of you share the same relentless commitment to excellence. Each of you practices your craft at the intersection of art and science, form and function, grounding inspiration and innovation in fundamental principles of math and physics and engineering. And all of you have spent your lives pushing boundaries. We know a little bit about boundary pushing. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, just outright ignoring them altogether. <laughs> Refusing to be confined by the world as it is, but instead having the courage, even the audacity, to pursue your vision of the world as it can and as it should be. The great jazz musician Miles Davis, one of my husband's favorites, once said, don't play what's there, play what's not there. And I think that's pretty much a good description of what each of you does every day you're really playing what's not there. You find solutions that we never thought of. You reveal and create beauty we never could have imagined or seen on our own. But each of you has also committed yourself to a fundamental principle. One best articulated, I believe, by one of today's honorees, Tom Dare, the president and co-founder of Smart Design. As he put it, and this is a quote, design is about people, not things. What you do impacts just about every moment of our lives, from the words we read, to the public spaces we enjoy, to the devices that help us do our jobs and run our homes and care for our families. Your work can determine whether a family has shelter or whether a village has clean drinking water. It can help fight disease, educate a child, and ensure we pass on cleaner, healthier world planet uh, to all our children and grandchildren. And your efforts grace our world with works of beauty that lift our spirits and stir our souls like nothing else can. But we honor you here today, not just for your creations and your innovations, but for the inspiration that all of you are providing to the next generation of creators and innovators and, and thinkers. Uh, and I know that just today, and I heard just a little bit, you guys did something amazing. You really raised the bar. Uh, and that's exactly what we were hoping you, you'd do. You took part in a teen design fair. It's really fabulous. I can't wait to hear more of the details. It occurred right here in Washington to help introduce what I believe were more than 400 uh, young people to careers in design. And I know that many of you were involved in similar efforts like this back at home where you uh, live and work. And we know the impact that experiences like this can have on the life of our young people, giving them role models for success and exposing them to new possibilities, helping give them direction and shape their dreams. But we also know that far too few young people in this country have access to programs and opportunities like the one uh, we did today. Even those who live just minutes from our great museums and cultural centers may feel like these resources are far beyond their reach. And one of my goals as First Lady is to help bridge that gap. And that's why I've been working to make sure that the White House is a showcase for America's rich cultural life and I want to open up these doors to as many of our young people as possible, hosting them right here in these same seats at these same tables uh, for concerts and workshops and mentoring sessions. Uh, I want all our young people in this nation to know that they have a place in our museums and in our theaters, uh, in our design studios, in our concert halls, and in all uh, halls of their very own White House. And 
I've got a partner in that effort standing behind me. Uh, I'm pleased to have the honor of introducing uh, Dr. Wayne Clough, uh, as you know, the head of our nation's Smithsonian Institution, someone who shares the same mission. And we were just talking about his travels, his works, his meetings with Secretary Duncan uh, to do more to make sure that the experiences of the Smithsonian are uh, available to kids living in the most remote places right here in this country. Uh, now, back when the Smithsonian was founded in the mid-1800s, it was focused primarily on science. And it wasn't until later that it expanded into culture, history, and then the arts. And that's actually a pretty good summary of the trajectory of uh, Dr. Clough's career. Uh, Wayne came to the Smithsonian from the Georgia Institute of Technology, where he was the president. And in one news article, he is described as, and this is a quote, a geotechnical engineer who reads and writes poetry, go figure, <laughs> quotes Faulkner, and likes indie films and the symphony. Uh, and he has brought to this current role that passion for art and science and that embrace of both uh, that makes our past and future one. And during his time at the helm of the Smithsonian, he's worked tirelessly to ensure that as many people as possible, particularly our young people, uh, can benefit from everything this national treasure has to offer. So it is my pleasure not only to join you for lunch and to sit next to Tim Gunn, how cool, <laughs> <laughs> but to pass the mic on to my dear friend, someone who has been such a huge support to me in this role and has made this day possible. Uh, along with the work that so many of you do, he helps lift it up. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce Secretary Wayne Clough. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Obama, for so being so gracious a host for this wonderful event. I did mention to the First Lady that after this, I have to leave a little early to go to give testimony about Smithsonian science. And they always prep me as to questions I might get. And someone said I might this time get a question about intelligent design. And I said, wow, I'm really prepared for that one today. <laughs> well, our honorees, of course, are going to remember this day always in their history. It's a wonderful chance to come and be uh, uh, spend time in the White House with the First Lady and all these creative people who are here. And courtesy of the Cooper Hewitt's National Design Museum, whose mission it is to Im explore the impact of design on our daily life and advance the public's understanding of the critical role of design in all of our lives. We do this through our collections, our exhibitions, our education and online programs, and the great people of the Smithsonian. The National Design Awards demonstrate and celebrate how creative design affects the quality of our life, our economy, and our environment, and it continues to grow in time. This year, we mark the 11th anniversary of the awards program, a milestone which will be celebrated on October 14th at a gala ceremony in New York City. Now, in conjunction with the awards, the Cooper Hewitt encourages the public to participate through the Online People's Design Award, which is now in its fourth year. Now, the winner of that competition will be announced at this year's gala in New York. The 2009 winner was the Trek Lime Bike Corporation, and representing the corporation today is the creative design director, Eric Lynn. Eric, congratulations. This morning, Cooper Hewitt, as the First Lady mentioned, held its first ever DC-based teen design fair, and some 400 young people took part, and hopefully will consider careers in design themselves in the future. Uh, I know the folks who attended, attended that event told me it was fantastic. We expect them someday maybe to be here in the White House and be award winners themselves. And if that happens, we can thank people who've helped us along the way. We begin with Target. And Michael, we thank you for everything Target has done for the Smithsonian, and particularly for the Cooper Hewitt and the design concepts that it represents and that Target supports so willingly and, and well. And uh, Target gives generously, as you may know, 5% of its income to all kinds of charitable causes, equaling more than $3 million every week. We also thank Bloomberg and P&G for supporting the National Design Awards. 
and Fast Company and New York Magazine and their media sponsorship of the National Design Week and the National Design Awards. So today, we celebrate the achievements of another group of extraordinary designers in a variety of fields. The Smithsonian itself is very fortunate to have an extraordinary director at the Cooper Hewitt, a creative innovator in his own right, Bill Moggridge. And one year ago today, Bill Moggridge was here at this ceremony because he received the Lifetime Design Award. And we thought, wouldn't it be nice to hire Bill Moggridge to be head of the museum? <laughs> and we were lucky to do that. So Bill, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Um, so please hold your applause until the end because we want to move along pretty sharply here. The Lifetime Achievement Award is given to a distinguished individual who has made a lasting contributions to design practice. The winner is Jane Thompson. Jane is an editor, designer, and planner who for six decades has explored how design relates to all of us. She is the founding editor of ID Magazine and an essential critical voice for and about design. Thank you, Jane. The Design Mind Award recognizes individuals who have changed design thinking or practice through their writing, research, and scholarship. Ralph Kaplan is the winner. For more than 50 years, Ralph has been thinking, writing, and speaking about design and collaborating with designers on exhibitions, films, and publications. He also edited ID Magazine. I think Jane was his boss for a while. The National Design Award for Corporate and Institutional Achievement recognizes a company that places design at the center of its business strategy. The 2010 finalists in this category are Design That Matters and OXO. The award goes to the US Green Building Council. The council promotes a sustainable future through cost-efficient and energy-saving green buildings. Since its founding in 1993, the organization has developed many services, including the LEED Green Building Cert Certification Program that rates design, construction, and operation of buildings. Architects today are transforming our homes, cities, and public spaces. This year's finalists are Design Core and Lake Flato Architects. Kieran Timberlake is the winner. Founded in 1984, the firm is noted for its integration of research with design and a deep environmental ethic. They design for clients in the arts, public institutions, and private residences, and will design the new US Embassy in London. Designers continually refine and reinvent the way we exchange ideas and information. The finalists for communication design are John Jay, and Myra Kalman. Stephen Doyle is this year's winner. Stephen gives words a deeper meaning in graphic form, resulting in an intelligent, provocative body of work. His clients include the New York Times, AIGA, Vanity Fair magazine, and the publisher, Alfred A. Knopf. He has helped to brand Martha Stewart and given a new identity to Barnes & Noble. The Fashion Design Award celebrates one of the most personal and most public forms of design expression, clothes. The finalists are Benaz Safapur and Pranza Skula. I would tricked on that one. <coughs> the award goes to Radati. Radati was founded in Pasadena, California in 2005 by Kate and Laura Malivi. They do amazing and wonderful things to fabrics and materials inspired by border towns, California condos, and uh, Japanese horror films. <laughs> They've created a new lens for us to see fashion. The Interaction Design Award is given for digital technology, and the finalists are Local Projects and Potion. The winner is Le Lisa Strausfeld. Lisa is an expert at visualizing information. She combines virtual and physical space to communicate content. And she's earned many design awards, including one for Sugar, 
the graphical user interface for the One Laptop Per Child project. The finalists for the award in interior design are Adelian Darling Design and Clive Wilkinson Architects. William Sofield wins. Bill is known for his unique take on modernism. His holistic approach is grounded on craft and materials, creating highly original and welcoming spaces. Some of his projects are retail boutiques for Tom Ford, Bottega Veneta, Yves Saint Laurent, and Gucci, as well as for the Soho Grand Hotel in New York. The landscape design category recognizes excellence in urban planning and the design of parks and gardens. Our finalists are Andrea Cochran Landscape Architecture and Stoss Landscape Urbanism. James Corner Field Operations is our winner. James established the firm in 1998. The practice includes diverse projects in landscape architecture and urban design. Among their work is the High Line in New York City, the pool decks and gardens of city centre in Las Vegas, and Fresh Kills Park on Staten Island. Product designers create the things that we encounter in our li lives. The finalists are Continuum and Frog Design. Smart Design gets the award. Davin Stahl and Tom Dare founded Smart Design in 1980. They are a multidisciplinary design consultancy responsible for designing the OXO Good Grips kitchen tools, the Smart Gauge Instrument Cluster for the Ford Fusion Hybrid, the New York Taxi Graphics, and medical devices for UCB. So please join me now in congratulating all of this year's winners and finalists. And again, many thanks to First Lady Michelle Obama. Mrs. Obama? <laughs> <laughs>